Hey guys, Daniel James here. And today uh, we're going to be continuing our beginner tutorial series. And today I want to take a look at dynamics and how you do um, dynamics with MIDI samples. So if you remember in the last video, we spoke about how to load samples into a DAW. And today what we're going to do is learn how to attach um, MIDI information to what you recorded in order to create dynamics. Okay, so what I've done is I'm going to switch over to my screen here. I'm going to move me up in this top right corner for now. So as you can see, I've I've just done this big uh, this big chord progression, um, and I'm going to play it to you. And this is what it will sound like with no MIDI dynamics. Okay, so if we just play this now. Okay, it sounds okay. I mean, the chord progression is there. It's very simple, very basic. But um, you could make this sound a lot better. And I've heard a lot of music um, from beginners who, who don't know about this yet. So it should be a fun tip. Let me get rid of that crap note. So the way I'm going to show you is actually how to program it in. Normally, I would use uh, my Korg Nano Control here, which um, allows me to change uh, things like modulation data, expression data, which I'll explain in a second. Um, Man manually from a controller so I can get more of a feel for it. But I'm going to show, you know, not everybody has those. So I'm going to show you how to do it in sequencer. Um, okay. So if we take a look at uh, just this brass set of chords here, I'm going to solo it out for you. So it, it looks like this and it sounds like this. Okay. So let's say we wanted it to be a little bit more... Um, you know, a little bit more relaxed and kind of build towards the end. You can do that. Um, some patches, it depends on the samples you use, but some patches will have velocity, which is um, essentially how hard or how loud a note is played back um, by how hard you push the key. So like if you push the key hard, you'll get a loud sound. If you push it soft, you'll get a soft sound. But a lot of them these days, um, it will be the same no matter how hard you hit it. So, I mean, I could do a demonstration of that. Like I hit it soft. I hit it hard. It's the exact same velocity. So what um, what you have in MIDI are uh, MIDI CC information, which uh, the CC stands, I believe, for command control. I, if that's incorrect, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. And these are essentially uh, different tracks that you can assign information to, which affect different aspects of the sound. So modulation in terms of orchestral libraries usually affects the velocity so like the volume it's not volume but like sort of volume so how hard it is so if i pull it down to the bottom you get very soft sound like they're blowing softly and as i move it up to the top they're blowing the instrument hard <laughs> anyway sorry um i couldn't help myself so uh, the other types of information you get if you look down here so here in Ableton Live, we have two different sections. If you don't see the envelope part, you just click this little E button and envelopes will load up. So what we want is MIDI control. And then underneath it says, uh, you know, like pitch bend. So we click this and it'll bring up a long list of different things. Uh, these are all different uh, CC numbers, but the ones we want to care about is MIDI CC1. I think it's MIDI CC1, but yeah, in my case it is, which is modulation because that w is the one that will control our velocity uh, expression sometimes changes velocity you it again it depends on the sample library but expression will sometimes change the volume like the actual level uh, so you could have like a really hard playing instrument this one doesn't have expression but you could pull the expression back so it would still be blowing hard but the volume would be lower and then of course you have ones like volume balance but we're not going to go into all those today today we're just going to deal with modulation assuming that all the libraries you have use modulation for velocity. So if I click on envelope here and play this back. So again, we want this beginning part to be soft and get loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here to the bottom where you see this dotted pink line. And if I click it, it'll create a point. And now I have this. So this line essentially represents how hard the instrument is being played, how loud the instrument is being played. So we want to start it very low. So we'll bring it right down here. We'll start around, you'll see a number around here. It'll be like six, seven, maybe 10. So now we've got a nice soft. So let's say we want it to kind of ebb and flow. We want it to be like, 
Ba, da, da, da. So what we'll do is we'll just bring in a MIDI, another MIDI data and we'll bring it up. We want it to go soft and then a little bit loud up to a crescendo and then maybe we want it to go a little bit soft again. And then we want it to build up, but a bit higher than last time. And then maybe a bit further down. And then this time we want it to be on a constant build up to like really loud at the end, but we want it to have a little, you know, a little bit of fluctuation in it. So it's kind of building, kind of not kind of building. So now if we play it back. So now you see we've got dynamics to this one part. So now if we solo our string part alongside our brass. So you see the strings are still up loud. So we'll do the exact same thing. We'll come down to our envelope here. We'll change it to modulation. So now we're only adding modulation to the signal and we'll bring it really low again. And we'll design something similar, but we'll have the strings pop out in a few places. So. Maybe not quite as dramatic as that, but we'll have it pop up in the middle. So the strings are kind of coming in and out of the brass part. And at the end here, they're actually going to come back down and then they're going to crescendo from a low. personally didn't like that I probably would have kept it the same so I'm actually going to spread this out so that it actually crescendos on the point and then we'll come down here so what I'm going to do here is these notes are, are really like this is my this is my you know professional composer ear. I'm just going <laughs> to make these. A... Again, that could be better, but for the purpose of demonstration, it'll do. So now our melody line over the top. Again, same thing. So let's bring the modulation down. And we'll make this one a bit more lyrical. So we want this to build to this part. And then as the note comes here, we want it to come down, but we want it to build up again into the next note. And then this note dies out a little bit. And then from down here, it builds up to this note. And then, you know, so I'm kind of creating like a dynamic curve to it. And then, you know, it comes down a bit quiet and we build up and we come down, we build up, we build up, we build up and we'll put like a curve on it. There we go. So there you go. That That's just the basics. I mean, I would tweak this a lot um, to make it sound a lot more appealing to me. Um, again, if I just put it back to what it was, uh, roughly, so it'd be about this, and then we'll delete all that, and it would have just been a static line like this. So what it was sounded like this. turned it into again just adds a little bit more life a little bit more realism and a little bit more interest um, and less fatigue into the music um, that you're designing. So yeah, that's the basics of modulation and dynamics uh, with MIDI. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll uh, see you in the next one.